Hello boys, welcome back to another session of video tutorials and this session is meant for class 11th biology students <clears throat> and this is meant for 8th January 2021. As all of us know, we are into the revision mode, we are revising each chapter of class 11th biology. As part of it, today we are revising chapter number 20 <clears throat> that is locomotion and movement. In that, for your memory, I would like to help that in this chapter, only limited topics were included for your batch. In that, muscular system, various types of muscles that we discussed, mechanism of muscle contraction, most important, and then skeletal system. So in the skeletal system today, <clears throat> we are going to talk about the bones and cartilage that is present in our body. How many bones are present in our body? Where are they present? What is the function of that? And where is the cartilage present? All these things we will come to know today. So framework of bones and cartilage forms the skeletal system. So skeletal system is bones plus cartilage. In human beings it consists of, of course all of us have got 206 bones. Remember your neat exam question and some cartilages. The two principal division of skeletal system are one axial skeleton, axial skeleton with 80 bones. This includes a skull, vertebral column, sternum and ribs constitute axial system. And uh, the second one that we talk, talk of is the appendicular skeleton. So the appendicular skeleton is the second one. It includes bones of limbs and girdles. So these two basically are making of the skeletal system. In the axial skeleton uh, lies along and longitudinal axis of the body. It supports and protects the organs of head, neck, and trunk. It includes a skull, ribs, sternum and vertebral column, backbone. Appendicular skeleton which is associated with the appendages consists of pectoral girdle, pelvic girdle and limb bones. So basically the prime importance of skeletal system is to give physical support for maintaining body shape protection of internal organs and it has a significant role in the movement of the body. Coming back, you can see the picture of the skull. Draw this and label, label each one and see where exactly is present, what is the importance of this. So you need to label everything and whenever you go to a dentist, he will be using this language of maxilla, upper jaw, mandible, lower jaw, okay, hyoid bone. And then when you go to ENT, he will be talking of this nasal bone, okay. And then when you go to the eye specialist, he will be speaking of this zygomatic bone and, uh, and ethmoid bone, spinoid bone, etc. And when you go to the ENT, he will be talking about the occipital condyle, occipital bone, temporal bone and of course the brain specialist brain surgeon will speak of parietal bone and frontal bone. So different doctors use different uh, uh, terminologies. But basically you should know these basic things. What are the various bones that are present in our facial one. So skull is the bony framework of the head. It consists of in fact 29 bones. Okay. And these 29 bones are separated by sutures, small divisions. These bones are cranial bo bones. Cranial bo bones are 8 in number. So 8 flattened bones forming the brain box or cranium. So this you must remember. Brain box or cranium consists of 8 bones. And then facial bones. <coughs> facial bones it consists of 14 bones. 14 bones forming the front part of the skull. Then you got 
U-shaped hyoid bone. It's a single U-shaped bone forming floor of the buccal cavity. Look at this hyoid bone, U-shaped buccal cavity. And bones of middle ear. Bones of middle ear, of course, all of you know, three bones will be present in that malus, incus and uh, stapes. So three bones are there, malleus, incus and stapes collectively called as ear ossicles. So skull joins with the vertebral column with the two occipital condyle. Two occipital condyle. So that is how the middle ear, that is three bones, malleus, incus, status. They are collectively called as ear ossicles. And then bones of cranium include one frontal, two parietals, one occipital, two temporals, one spinoid and one ethymoid. So totally it comes to 29 bones. So vertebral column on the other hand is also called the backbone or spine. The vertebral, vertebral column is the main axis of the body which articulates with the skull okay? and pectoral girdle, <coughs> pelvic girdle and ribs. The vertebral column is differentiated into first one cervical. So there are seven in number cervical. Okay. Let me see here. Yes. Cervical seven in number followed by thoracic chest region 12 then lumbar 5 that's why most of the time we say l1 l2 l3 l4 l5 and this uh, l3 and l4 very very important because if there is any problem in this uh, l3 l4 our legs will be affected paralysis to the legs will come so we must be careful about this lumbar bones and then uh, sacral these are uh, uh, though there is there is one uh, five fused vertebrae. In fact, five will be fused. Similarly, similarly coccygeal. In fact, uh, though we are taking it as one, it is five fused vertebrae. So these reasons starting from the skull. And then there are 12 pairs of ribs. That is chest bones connected dorsally to vertebral column and ventrally to sternum. So 11th and 12th rib bones are not connected with sternum and are called floating ribs. Okay, they are called floating ribs. And this, uh, the out of the 12 pairs, that means 24 bones in the ribs. Each rib is a thin flat bone <coughs> connected <coughs> dorsally to the vertebral column and ventrally to sternum. The first seven pairs of ribs are attached directly with the sternum and are called true ribs. The eighth, ninth and tenth pairs of ribs articulate. The seventh pair of ribs are not directly attached to the sternum. These are called vertebrochondral ribs or false ribs. Seventh pair, false ribs. The last two. 11th and 12th pairs of ribs remain free anteriorly and are called floating ribs as we said. So you need to remember this. And what about the limb? That is hands and legs. That is appendicula. Bones of the limbs. Being a biology boy, you must know this. And uh, the, each limb is made up of 30 bones. Each limb is made up of 30 bones. Four limb, that is the humerus. Where is it? Now let us see uh, the humerus. Look at that. Humerus. This is the four limb. Upper arm we say humerus. Ulna. Ulna radius. Okay, lower arm. And eight carpals. Eight carpals. That is your wrist. Remember Mutaya Murali Yeah, wrist bowler we say that carpals and then five metacarpals in the palm five metacarpals and then 14 phalanges is so a phalanges the, the, what are phalanges 
these uh, digits whatever bones that are present in our fingers digits then hind limb that is leg consists of femur strongest bone femur thigh bone patella okay that round disc shaped one in the uh, joint a tibia and fibula in the lower arm one tibia one fibula seven tarsals near the foot five metatarsals in the foot and then 14 phalanges that is digits the leg digits the bones that are present and of course these are connected you can see the the sacrum coxal bone ilium pubis and ischium these are all interconnected so the pelvic girdle is also called hip girdle this is very very important pelvic girdle it is composed of two hip bones or coxal bones this is the one hip bone or coxal bone very very important each coxal bone consists of three separate parts and what are those three separate parts just now i said one is ilium ilium is the short and straight bone and the second one is the ischium lower this one lower elongated one lower elongated bone running parallel to vertebral column and the third one is pubis pubis is inner one this this region inner one so inner smaller bone on its outer surface it has a deep depression called acetabulum okay depression which with the most almost spherical head of the femur forms the hip joint so this is the hip joint and one needs to be very very careful about the hip joint the reason is hip joint uh, normally in senior citizens particularly many times in the bathrooms and other things they simply fall down <coughs> because of the hip joint okay and uh, whenever there is uh, slipping in the bathroom they are uh, made or they lose uh, their uh, <coughs> what you call strength because it is the hip joint that bears the entire weight of the upper body upper body of the uh, person so if the hip joint is not able to bear the upper weight let's say a person has got a 60 kg weight so it's something like 40 kg the whole hip joint has to bear and uh, normally the legs share that but once the hip joint is a fracture the legs will not be functional they are no more attached hence this will lead to many complications in the senior citizens so one must be very very careful about the hip joint and here of course uh, we are having this upper arm and lower limb same thing whatever i have told humerus uh, radius ulna eight carpals five metacarpals 14 phalanges lower limb femur strongest bone i said this is uh, lower limb when we say legs and uh, this is hands upper arm hands so you need to remember this because when you go to a doctor he will be using all this terminology once he says femur don't get confused femur tibia fibula tarsals metatarsals phalanges and cup shaped patella over the knee and then uh, we come to the girdles pelvic and uh, pectoral girdle the uh, it is something like a cup and saucer mechanism pectoral and pelvic girdle bones help in articulation that's why i said cup and saucer articulation of the upper and lower limbs you are able to rotate your hand in uh, 360 degrees that's possible because of this articulation similarly you can uh, rotate your leg also <coughs> in uh, in uh, at least uh, say 180 degrees that's also possible because of this uh, pelvic girdle Uh, this is with the axial skeleton pectoral girdle consists of clavicle you know shoulder bone clavicle and scapula pelvic girdle consists of two coxal bones okay and each coxal bone is formed by the fusion of three bones just now i have shown you uh, ilium ischium and pubis that is ii 
P. This so you need to remember. So the joints are basically the place of articulation between two or more bones. Then this place of articulation between two or more bones is called joint. So one must be very careful again. Invariably there is a damage in the joints. Okay, hence we need to be careful. And uh, there are varieties of uh, joints. Basically, in our body, joints are of three types. One is the fibrous. Second one is the cartilaginous, and third one is synovial. Now, fibrous joints they are uh, uh, immovable uh, sutures between the bones of the skull. So they do not allow any movement. That's why we say immovable. Present in skull bones to form cranium whereas cartilaginous bones slightly mobile means limited movement bones are held together with the help of cartilage present in the vertebrae permits limited movements as i said and uh, these are present in the vertebrae and the synovial they can be mobile freely mobile filled with a liquid called synovial fluid sometimes sometimes uh, Nowadays, uh, the orthopedicians, uh, what they are doing is they are giving injection directly to the knee, uh, wherein the the chemical that is injected will make the synovial fluid to be generated, so that friction will be reduced in the knee. Uh, many techniques are coming. New medicines, new technology is helping us to have a reduction in our pains. But then, what is important is that we need to be fit. For all this to happen, so that we can avoid. So, synovial fluid, as I said, it is a fluid-filled synovial cavity. Provide considerable movements, as I said, ball and socket joint, hinge joint, pivot joint, gliding joints. So, variety of joints are there. In that, of course, if you remember uh, during our regular uh, video tutorials, a gliding joint permits only back and forth. and side to side movements that is joints found between the carpal bones and tarsal bones whereas a hinge joint allows movement primarily in one plane that is elbow knee ankle interphalangeal joints only one direction a pivot joint also allows movements only in one plane that is joints between the atlas and axis a condyloid or ellipsoid joint always allows movements in two planes back and forth side to side joints between metacarpals and phalanges and then saddle joint allows the same movements as an ellipsoid joint but the movements are free joint between the carpal and metacarpal of the thumb of the hand and last the most important one the ball and socket joint is the most freely mobile of all joints and you know it is in the shoulder and hip joints so next we move on to the disorders of the muscular or skeletal system as all of us know that particularly senior citizens and people having low levels of calcium uh, will suffer many disorders and athletes of course very common they have muscle catches when they are running when they are doing uh, the sports personalities they are very common sometimes they are called uh, in fact uh, sports injuries okay but uh, it is also to be noted that uh, some of the people are very very unfortunate by birth because they get diseases by birth and one of the diseases that comes through genetics is myasthenia gravis it's autoimmune disorder what do you mean by autoimmune disorder our wbc will attack our own cells our own body cells by mistake it is wrong identity okay our own wbc see wbc are our soldiers they should protect us they should give protection for our body but instead of giving protection they only go against our own body then we say autoimmune disorder so this affects neuromuscular junction causing fatigue weakness and paralysis of skeletal system look at that and the life will be so measurable and horrible as the person puts on age maybe a day comes where she she or he may not be able to lift a cup of coffee hence 
this is myasthenia gravis is very very uh, dangerous it is a autoimmune disorder and it affects neuromuscular junctions so only solution for this is uh, maybe the answer for as on today is only biotechnology it is only stem cell therapy that can do various things are being uh, uh, looked into by the neuro neurologists but this is only uh, what we say day to day medication it only allows the person not to become worst it is only maintenance ones right then muscular dystrophy again it is inborn abnormality of the muscles associated with dysfunction and ultimately deterioration and lack of dystrophin which is a protein and causes muscular dystrophy so it is a degeneration of skeletal muscles due to genetic disease the muscles which will be like a bundle they just separate themselves into a threads so the muscle loses its strength and when muscle loses its strength the person also loses its strength again very very unfortunate very very drastic disease then osteoporosis of course this is developed one decreased bone mass in old age as person becomes older the bones become brittle and there will be pores in the bones that's why osteoporosis pores on the osteo so there is a chance of <coughs> frequent fractures due to decreased estrogen and of course arthritis very 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 common nowadays it is inflammation of joints previously it was only affecting elderly people nowadays uh, due to lack of calcium uh, due to lack of uh, intake of calcium rich foods even youngsters are getting this arthritis okay inflammation of the joints particularly knee joints and you must observe people walking with the imbalance of the body shifting of the body weight because the entire body weight can't be obesity is one of the reasons for this okay then gout that is inflammation of joints due to accumulation of uric acid crystals the other day when we were dealing with the excretion chapter i told this and then last titani rapid spasms in muscles due to low calcium in body fluid again lot of pain severe pain will be there spasms will be there and of course along with this rheumatoid arthritis also is the another one it involves painful inflammation of synovial membrane of the joints movements become extremely painful and may lead to deformities of joints the even when there a movement forcible movement of the joints will give sounds also the person can himself or herself hear the sound that is severe rheumatoid arthritis so these are the various uh, disorders that are associated with muscular and skeletal system let us hope being biology boys that in future we'll have very good suitable medicine for all this and we hope a day will come where all this autoimmune disorders can be rectified